Hey guys, this is Kyle um, with Key Recordings, and today I'm going to give you guys a quick review and tutorial on the JJP Guitars Waves plugin. It's a really cool plugin. Um, my friend referred it to me, and since I've tried it one time, it's pretty much made its way onto every single mix that I've done since then. So it deserves some attention. It's really cool, and um, I'll bring it up so you guys can check it out. Um, this is a track that I did strictly for mixing purposes. It's a mix cover of architects song broken cross go check out the band i'll link them in the description but um this is what the plugin looks like um i have some eq on the guitars before the jjp and after just some eq but uh, i'll play the track with everything so you guys can hear how it sounds and then i'll single the jjp out so you can you can tell what i've done with it in this mix to get the guitars set in So as you can tell, um, I used it to take some frequencies out, some of the boxiness. Um, I think it's a really good way to use this plugin to take out some of these weird frequencies and to help mold it into the mix. But you can also use this plugin to add beef to your guitars. Um, I've used it to add a lot of beef to um, guitars when you're using maybe guitar VSTs, amp VSTs. Uh, any modeling software, if you're using any modeling hardware like a Pod HD, which is what I used for this. So um, if you're using anything like that that has a kind of sterile sound and doesn't really have a lot of beef in it, you can use this to add beef as well as take stuff out. But in this certain mix, this particular mix, I used it to take some frequencies out. All right, so let's single out the guitars. And we'll go through the different settings. All right, so I'm going to turn off all of my processing and we'll bring up a new fresh JJP guitars plug. And all right, when you look at the plugin, you have a sensitivity control, which is pretty much your threshold on the whole plugin and will affect how much the signal is processed and how much is you're feeding into the plugin pretty much. Um, then you have your lows your highs and a compressor and moving on from there you have your main which it's also like your input volume as sensitivity is is kind of how much these affect your tone this is kind of just like a bare level input gain control and then you have your edge which is pretty much a stereo widener it's really cool i like it a lot you have your warm, which you can use for beefiness, kind of beefs at the low end. You have the sustain, which is like another form of like a compressor, pretty much. Uh, you have a doubler and reverb. Um, I don't really like the doubler. I'll go through it with you guys so you can hear what it sounds like. Um, the verb, I didn't end up using that either most of the time, but you put a little bit of reverb on some rhythm tracks and it'll sound really good. Uh, you have an attack, so if you want to add some pick attack or make it a little more aggressive, you have this. Um, and you have a presence meter, which is really handy too. And all these things can be turned on and off. Um, you have your monitoring. You can monitor your out or your in. Um, you just need to watch that you're not going to go over zero or you'll get some clipping, obviously. Um, you have your polarity right here, switch. And you have these four buttons, which are very interesting. Uh, you have clean, rock, R&B, ambient, and chug. And these have different presets as you can see when i switch through them but the clean and the rock are the same settings and what i figured out with this is like depending on which one you have engaged it will make everything sound different um the ones that i tend to go for um the clean and the chug are the ones that i've used uh rock's a little fizzy but uh we'll go through it and i'll show you so you guys can actually see what i'm talking about And uh, first, you, what I, what we'll do first is we'll go through some presets and we'll pick a preset that sounds good and we'll work from there, which is what I suggest you do with most plugins, especially when you get them at first. So uh, here we go, we'll start.
all right, cool. So we'll roll with this preset and I'm going to go through all the settings. Um, I'll put their max volume up and take them all the way off and you can see what they sound like, but um, I'll also dial in a tone. And what happens when you do the preset, it'll, it'll be normally one of these. So we'll just go with Chug because I thought that preset sounded pretty good. So as you can see, when I play the track, um, I'll play it for you, I just did it, but I'll play it for you again and I'll bypass the JJP and you'll hear basically what, what the difference that we made. As so as you can see, um, Alone, it might sound like I was taking too much out of the guitars, but in the mix, it, it really, really, really lets the bass set in and helps everything out. Um, I'll go through the rest of the video and uh, I'll turn on the rest of the um, plugins I have in the chain, which are just an EQ before and after the JJP, and you'll see how, that I, how it actually used to set in. So let's see, I'll turn everything else back on. All right, so this is everything off. All right, guys, so that's my quick tutorial and review of the JJP plugins from Waves. Um, I think it's really cool. I think it's really good. I totally think it's worth 100 bucks. I'll put it in the link to where you can go purchase it. Um, check it out, um, subscribe, follow, I'll be putting up more mix tutorials, um, plugin reviews, anything. So thanks for watching guys. Peace.